Hi again everybody. Today we're going to continue with B7. We're going to look at ecological cycles about the movement of different materials through an environment. And um, before we do that, however, B7 um, and questions on B7 seem to present an opportunity for your exam board to ask a lot of the maths based questions um, that they need to add or to ask of, on each of your science exams. And as I said, in biology, B7 seems to be where a lot of them occur. So before we crack on with ecological cycles, um, I'd like you to have a go at some maths for me here. We have a set of data. Five specimens have been taken and their wingspans have been measured in meters. I'd like you to calculate the mean, the median and the mode of this data. So please pause here and have a go at calculating those now. Unpause once you're ready to go through the answers. So hopefully that's given you long enough to press the pause button because we're going to go through them now. So the mean from this data is 1.28 meters. The median, the middle value, if you put them in order, is 1.2 meters. And the mode, the one that features most often, is also 1.2 meters. To calculate the mean, of course, we add them all up and we divide by the number of values. So today we're going to look at ecological cycles. And as I mentioned, it's about how materials cycle around within an environment. Um, you're going to need to be able to identify carbon and water cycles, although we'll also have a little look at a decay cycle as well. You need to be able to describe the processes that are involved in those three cycles, um, although decay is really a part of the carbon cycle, and explain how these cycles can be affected by a wide range of different factors. So first off, I'll open a little introduction. Um, atoms exist in different forms and in different compounds at different times during history, and they cycle between them. Um, we also see this type of cycling um, with the element carbon and with the compound water, which the two we're going to focus on mainly. Just as rocks can move from being igneous to sedimentary to metamorphic, um, in the rock cycle, Carbon and water can also exist in different forms at different times. So water can move between being water, liquid water, solid water or ice, and water vapour. And carbon can switch between being solid carbon and be, being carbon dioxide, for example. Other elements and compounds can also exist in cycles. And for example, plenty of humans eat protein in the form of meat. From other animals. Our bodies then break down this protein into the things that make it up, its constituent parts which are called amino acids, and we then use these to make proteins within our own bodies for growth and repair. I think sometimes this idea sort of passes people by. If you eat a protein-rich diet that has a lot of meat in it, for example, um, you're likely to be doing that to try and gain muscle. The animal proteins do not go to your muscles. It's animal protein. It's no use to you. Instead, the animal proteins are digested. And as, it, as I mentioned there, the proteins are broken down into individual amino acids. And your body uses those amino acids to build human proteins. And when we eventually die, these building blocks get returned to the environment. And they end up being used by other living organisms. Once living things do die, bacteria or special groups of bacteria called deco decomposing bacteria and also fungi can help dead organisms be broken down and rot away. This helps recycle minerals and nutrients into the environment, which can then be used by other living things. As they decompose dead matter, the decomposers also respire because they are living things, so they carry out respiration too. This releases carbon dioxide into the environment, which contributes to the carbon cycle. So we are going to go through now the water cycle and the carbon cycle. What I would recommend that you have for each one is a simple diagram with some labels to describe what is happening at each stage. So make sure you've got uh, two headings, or maybe you want to have one on one piece of paper and one on another. Um, because we're going to go through both cycles. So here is my simplified version of the water cycle. 
um, and we have a number of different stages taking place a lot of names I hope you would recognize things like condensation evaporation transpiration we've talked about in an earlier unit precipitation just a fancy name for rain percolation cooling and then some different structures that I would hope you would know too things like clouds the ocean etc so you want to have a similar diagram to this and then we're going to add um, some labels in a second just going through what happens in each of the different stages so first off then let us run through what happens to water during this water cycle so evaporation is when water turns into a liquid sorry turns from a liquid into a gas when it evaporates energy from the sun can evaporate water from anywhere on the earth's surface and um, places like puddles ponds lakes and oceans so the water is evaporated by energy from the sun um, and turns from a liquid into a gas and um, after evaporation water starts to cool down it loses energy and it cools down and it will convert back from a gas to a liquid um, and this often leads to the formation of clouds which are just big clouds of um, liquid water um, transportation then happens now that this isn't a label that we had in our diagram but clouds do not stay in one area they can be transferred from one place to or transported sorry from one place to another by strong winds they can be blown around for miles and miles and miles from the original site where they were evaporated precipitation then occurs um, which is when either rain or snow or hail or sleet falls from the sky now this can lead to something called surface runoff surface runoff and um, well a lot of the water will a lot of the water that falls during precipitation will be absorbed into the ground um, but if a lot of water falls in one go or if the ground is already wet from previous rainfall and um, some water just runs straight along the surface of the ground so surface runoff is water that has not been absorbed back into the ground um, and just moves across the top or the surface so infiltration is another name for percolation as far as where we need to be concerned now this occurs when water that's fallen as precipitation so either as rain or snow or hail or sleet is absorbed into the ground it can then be stored underground um, in rocks called aquifers those of you who study geography probably have a greater knowledge than you will need to have and um, for biology and the water cycle about aquifers transpiration which we did um, much earlier on now i think back in b2 plants need to maintain a constant stream of water to their leaves for transport and for support so they allow some water to evaporate as water vapor from their leaves and um, so that more is constantly pulled to the leaves from the soil this is that transpiration stream and um, which happens because water molecules have cohesion with each other when one moves up it's attached to others which follow along with it so make sure that you've got these labels on your diagram you have to know what happens at the different stages of the water cycle and how water moves around or cycles from one site or one area to another next the carbon cycle so a slightly simpler diagram or at least i hope it feels it's simpler anyway and um, you can see some different sources of either carbon being produced as carbon dioxide or absorbed and forming solid carbon and you can also see some of the different processes involved and um, pollution photosynthesis respiration feeding and even decomposition towards the center which we'll come on to in a minute with the decay cycle so the carbon cycle as, the, as i said with that last diagram is a little simpler and um, the arrows on here have slightly different colors depending on what's happening the yellowish arrows are carbon dioxide that's being released as respiration and the orange arrows are carbon dioxide that's being released as a result of combustion or burning 
So stage one of the carbon cycle, carbon is regularly being put into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide as a result of respiration and combustion. For stage two, we've added a new colour of arrow, a blue arrow now, which is carbon dioxide being taken in. So in stage two, carbon dioxide is absorbed by producers to make carbohydrates in photosynthesis. Carbohydrates contain carbon. So gaseous, the gas form of carbon um, in carbon dioxide is being taken in and it's being turned into solid carbon as part of a carbohydrate. Now, at the same time, at the bottom here, we also have this animal eating grass. Well, grass is carrying out photosynthesis too, and it's full of carbohydrates. So when, this, when the cow is eating the grass, solid carbon um, is passing from the grass into the cow. Stage three of the carbon cycle. So animals feed on plants, which we've mentioned already. This passes carbon compounds along a food chain. Most of the carbon that they consume by eating the grass is then exhaled as carbon dioxide during respiration. Eventually, both the animal and plants will die. So once the plants and animals die or the plant or animal material dies, um, something else can then still occur. That carbon is not lost. The dead organisms end up being eaten by decomposers um, and carbon that was in the dead materials bodies is returned to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Decomposers, whether they are um, large organisms or something simple like bacteria or even fungi, um, they are still living things and as a result they carry out respiration which means they give out carbon dioxide. Um, sometimes, however, decomposition is blocked for some reason. It could be that the conditions, well, it, it happens because the conditions are wrong. So it could be that maybe the level of oxygen isn't, isn't correct. It could be that the temperature is too low. There are a number of different reasons why decomposition will not happen. If that is the case, the plant and animal material may in the future be available as a fossil fuel. It takes a long time for that to happen but it may happen in the future. If it does, we burn fossil fuels, they go through combustion, and they all release one thing, carbon dioxide. So even if they don't end up um, being decomposed and putting their carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere, um, in hundreds of thousands or millions of years time, when they are burned as a fuel, they release the carbon as carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So the carbon continues to be cycled around. Lastly today then, this exam question for you. This diagram shows part of the carbon cycle. Use this and your knowledge of the processes involved to explain how living things are involved in the cycling of carbon in the atmosphere. So looking at this, you want to be able to, be, you want to, be able to explain how carbon moves in the direction shown by each one of these arrows. So how does it move from animals to being in the atmosphere? How does it move from being in the atmosphere to being in green plants? How does it move from being in plants to being in animals? How does it move from being animals into microorganisms like bacteria and fungi? How does it move from them to be back in the atmosphere? So pause here and have a go at that, please. And um, so looking at your your answer here, then um, the top bit of the mark scheme is quite important. If for at least if you don't really feel you've had much any relevant content, then you, I'm afraid you'll have zero. But if you've for at least one process, you've either named the organism that carries that carries it out or you've named the carbon compound it either uses or it produces um, you'll be able to get one or two marks there. If. Uh, some of the processes and that you've named at least one of them you've either named what organism is involved or you've named the carbon compounds either used or produced you could move up to three or four and um, but for five or six you should be identifying the names of quite a few of the processes and also the type of organisms that carry them out and what substances are made and what substances are used 
So, important points to include in your answer. If you've said that plants carry out photosynthesis, wonderful. If you've said that plants in photosynthesis take in carbon dioxide, great. Or if you've said that they make carbohydrates, wonderful. If you've said that animals eat plants, good. If you've said that plants carry out respiration, which produces carbon dioxide. If you've said that animals carry out respiration, which produces carbon dioxide, wonderful. If you've said that plants and animals can die, if you've said that microorganisms can decompose them or break them down, and if you've said that microorganisms respire, all of those are key points that can get you marks. And that is everything for today.